Magandang umaga po. Good morning. Magandang tanghali sa lahat. Thank you for attending today's online hearing. So this public hearing of the Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entre Entrepreneurship joint with the Committee on Public Services is hereby called to order. Uh, I could see Senators uh, Tolentino, Marcos, and oh, and uh, Sherwin, Senator Gatchalian. So we have uh, a quorum for today. So thank you, uh, my dear colleagues, for joining me in our hearing today. So once again, I declare the presence of a quorum. So Ms. Bernadine Mahinay, our committee secretary for today, please acknowledge the resource persons who are uh, participating in our hearing today. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, from the Local Water Utilities Administration, or LUA, we have Administrator Mr. Jackie A. Lapus. Good morning. From the National Electrification Administration, we have Attorney Rosanne Rosero Lee. From the Energy Regulatory Commission, we have Chairperson Agnes. Vicenta Torres de Vanadera. Morning, ma'am. Morning. From the National Telecommunications Commission, we have Mr. Edgardo Cabarros. From Globe Telecom, we have the Director of the Policy Division, Attorney Ariel Tubayan. From the Philippine Rural Electric Cooperative Association, or PhilRECA, we have Attorney Janine Defay Colingan, its Executive Director and General Manager. From the Philippine Electric Plant Owners Association, we have Attorney Renulfo Ocampo, the President. We also Good morning. have Laban Consumer Incorporated, Attorney Victorio Mario de Magiba. Um, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Bernadine. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, we will only tackle one bill for today to simplify, hopefully simplify uh, matters. This is Senate Bill Number 1473, an act institutionalizing an installment payment scheme on basic utility bills during calamities and for other purposes. Uh, given a very catchy name by its author, The Three Gives Law. And the author is uh, with us this morning. So, Siguro, it's just uh, right and proper that I recognize Senator Tolentino for an opening statement or an explanation on the uh, rationale and the thoughts behind the bill. Senator Tolentino is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Siguro, do I have to off this? Or, alisin ko na po muna itong uh, laptop kasi redundant and uh, nag-e-echo po. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat, uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Alco, uh, my dear colleagues. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, our good chairman uh, the of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship for hearing Senate Bill 1473 entitled An Act Institutionalizing an Installment Payment Scheme on Basic Utility Bills During Calamities and for Other Purposes to be known as a Three Gives Law. In summary, uh, the bill seeks to institutionalize the response of the government and the private corporations during, especially during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic period by placing a moratorium on electric, water and telephone bills during the entire duration of a state of calamity or emergency. Thereafter, all amounts which fell due during the period of calamity or emergency will be paid through an installment scheme. This bill proposes that unpaid bills will be settled in three equal installments. The passage of this bill is very timely and necessary. With the effects of COVID-19 pandemic to the ordinary Filipino citizens, is devastating 
and and I I have here. Ma, hindi ko na siguro isahin to, isahin, Mr. Chairman. A uh, survey conducted by the National Economic Development Authority, the Department of Finance, 44% said that their income is not enough to cover the basic needs. In the same survey study, it was found out that 40, 44% of almost 400,000 res respondents lost their jobs or source of income during this pandemic. Eh, mahaba pa ho ito. Hindi pa natin alam kung kailan ito matatapos. The law will not result in a loss for the electric companies, uh, other utility companies, as their revenue will still be the same. What will happen is that there will just be a delay in uh, the collection of payments. Uh, a slide is being shown. I, I hope my colleagues and the other resource persons can uh, see this. Hindi ko na po isa-isa ito to, to save time. Uh, the passage of this bill would provide temporary relief to ordinary Filipino families and even small, uh, medium-sized enterprises. Kahapon, we talked about small uh, tourism-based companies. Uh, will save them from the burden of paying their electric, water, and telephone bills, which would take up around 10% of their income. Instead of depleting their resources to avoid the disconnection of their utilities, they can devote it to other necessities like food and shelter. Uh, for the past several weeks, since the start of this pandemic, we've been hearing of, of uh, uh, the mantra, work from home, the, the new modalities of working uh, outside your offices. I, even the Civil Service Commission issued a memorandum circular, and I'm flashing it on the screen. And nangyari po, Mr. Chairman, pinagtrabaho natin yung mga... Uh, kawali ng gobyerno, yung mga uh, nasa pribadong sektor sa bahay, eh natural po, lumakas po yung konsumo nila sa kuryente. Nasa bahay po sila, gumagamit ng tubig, gumagamit po ng kuryente sa laptop, sa computer, gumagamit ng electric fan, gumagamit po ng, uh, ng air conditioning, eh lalo pong tumaas yung, yung konsumo nila dahil doon sila nagtatrabaho. So, yung, yung gastos po dito, natipid naman po nung uh, mga ahensya ng, ng pamahalaan, natipid din po ng mga pribadong ng kumpanya. So, ito po ay uh, ito po ay sasagot doon sa naging karagdagang problema nila. I'm 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 sure meron na po kayong kopya nung uh, latest meral ko bill ninyo. Ito po yung yung sa amin, uh, hindi ko na rin po ito maintindihan. So, mamaya po siguro ay paliliwanag ko ng whoever is representing uh, meral ko here. This bill is timely and useful in our current predicament as the Philippines is always uh, besieged by uh, typhoons and other calamities. Recently, we had a typhoon ambo in, in uh, eastern Samar. I'm very sure that the uh, electric cooperative uh, company concerned will be uh, deluged by complaints coming from uh, residents in uh, eastern Samar in the days ahead. And uh, if you can recall, if you will recall, a month ago, we had the Taal volcano crisis, uh, which also resulted in in a uh, disruption to the local economy of Batangas, Cavite, and other outlying areas affecting hundreds of thousands of Filipinos, lahat po ito ay makakatulong. At ito po sinasabi, ito po sinasabi ko, as I, as I speak, uh, Mr. Chairman, hindi lang naman po natin ito naging problema uh, ang, ilang pong mga, ang ilan pong mga bansa ay nauna pa sa atin na kumilos tungkol dito. I'd like to show a slide. Uh, if if the technical is ready. Sa United Kingdom po, if you can see the slide, uh, ang ginawa po nila, yung mga energy suppliers, ay eh, nagkaroon po, nag, nag, nagpulong po sila, at para po dito sa coronavirus crisis, eh, binigyan po nila ng isang uh, payment plan yung kanilang mga consumers. Uh, hindi ko na po ititetalyo ito. Can, this can be downloaded by whoever is interested. Sa Italy po, suspension of payment of electricity, water, and gas bills. May gas bills po sila kasi nagwi-winter doon until April 2020. Lithuania, uh, pay, pay in installments on individual schedule up to one year. One year po yung kanila. In Canada, defer electric uh, payment of electricity and natural gas bills until June 18, 2020 without any late fees or added interest payments. Yung pong iba, isinapatas. Yung pong iba ay yun na lamang pong 
uh, electric uh, company, siguro meron po silang uh, ibang, ibang sistema doon, kaya po uh, napabili sila. The Czech, Czech Republic postponing uh, energy payments for up to three months. At, this, at the same time, they stop disconnecting customers. Sa Pakistan, payment to bills by law and residential electricity consumers allowed to be submitted in three months installments. So yung, yung sa atin po, uh, Mr. Chairman, layunin po natin matulungan yung mga uh, consume, low, uh, ordinary consumers, mga pamilya na nasa, nasa lockdown pa, uh, nasa quarantine pa hanggang ngayon, at layunin po din natin matulungan yung maliliit na mga negosyo na makabangon agad. Ang tanong po, meron pong mga ilang mga uh, utility companies like for example, uh, Meralco na, na, na nagpusa na and even uh, ERC, I'd like to commend uh, uh, Madam Chair De Benadera, Chairman De Benadera, uh, yung, yung pong naglabas kayo ng regulation hanggang uh, end ng ECQ period. Pero may mga tanong dyan, ito po ba eh kasama yung MECQ? So there, there is really a need to institutionalize this, uh, Mr. Chairman, not just for this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, yung pahong parating na na mga kalamidad ay eh dapat pong kasama na rin. Uh, na, na 19 typhoons are expected to enter the Philippine area of responsibility this year at malaking damage na naman po ang, ang mangyayari sa ating uh, ekonom ekonomiya. So the passage of this bill is in pursuit of the betterment of the general welfare of our kababayans and I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, my colleagues would, would support me in having uh, this bill approved. Maraming salamat po uh, uh, Senator Pimentel uh, for uh, allowing this uh, bill to be heard uh, while we are in a an MECQ situation and thank you again for our colleagues for participating uh, as well as the resource persons present here. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Thank you Senator Tolentino. Thank you for filing the bill because the idea behind the bill is uh, novel and uh, very relevant uh, for the time period. Uh, the chair also makes of record the participation of Senator Cynthia Villar. Uh, did uh, Secretary Bernadine, did we recognize DTI and Miralco? Na recognize na ba? DTI is present. Um, sir, yes, just again. Ms. Burns. Uh, um, Yusuf huh? Rudy Castello. Welcome. Sir, and we also have from Meralco the Vice President and Head of Utility Economics, Mr. Lawrence Espinaldo. Good morning. Okay, thank you for your, your presence. So, okay, so let us hear if uh, the senators want to say something, just interrupt me anytime. But Siguro DTI should uh, comment first if uh, if you have a position on this bill. You say, Ruth? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, honorable uh, members of the Senate and our colleagues in government and the private sector. Um, the Department of Trade and Industry, sir, fully supports the bill uh, as a an economic relief for consumers during calamities and health pandemics or epidemics such as this one. Uh, Senate Bill number 1473 seeks to mandate a payment moratorium on all residential utilities specifically customers will be up allowed to pay utility bills in three equal months monthly installments without interest um so just to to let the this august body know uh we did not include uh utility payment of utility bills because we believe that this is under the mandate of the department of energy uh but the DTI also issued memorandum circulars to aid the consumers um, during this time of pandemic. We had an MC on uh, rental for commercial and residential concessions, and we also had uh, other memorandum circulars that are similar uh, to this one. We have certain comments, sir. Uh, the first one, which I believe would be very important if sent Senator Tolentino will indulge. 
uh, the draft bill says that the that this concession shall be provided in times of calamity, sir. But uh, maybe we can suggest that other times of emergency, such as uh, rebellion or martial law or uh, a state of war, uh, may also be included because because this would be uh, these would be similar times when the consumers will be unable to pay, sir. Uh, among other things, we have other comments as well. If I may continue, uh, maybe we can also include, sir, uh, internet service, uh, internet services, uh, cable services um, to be included in the utility services that are being sought to be given concession, sir. Uh, we will submit our formal position paper via email, sir. Uh, we can do that today. Uh, as we are ready, we're just waiting for the signature of Secretary Lopez for endorsement to the Senate, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek Castello. So you will be proposing, you, most likely you will be proposing amendments to Section 3, no? yung coverage niya. So yes, sir. It, the enumeration of the utilities, at saka when, when the, and when, 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 yes, the, sir. when the moratorium will apply. Sige, so, yes, sir. But yes, sir. As of the, as of the moment, the bill uh, mentions uh, residential, you know, concepts yan, and then electric, water, and telephone. As of the moment, yes, no? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir? Uh, yes, yes. yes sir. Uh, sir, we have been receiving requests as well, or maybe some complaints on commercial establishments uh similarly situated sir but the, i understand that the bill is focused on residential concession but uh if this if, if this body would want to include sir we will not object and we will uh similarly support sir uh you said you mentioned the uh, de department order by initiating a memorandum circular on the rental uh, amortization yes, deferment yes. and amortization yes, sir. Anong concept? Yes, sir. Ano concept doon? You spread it out uh, for how, how 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 long? Uh 6 months sir. Covering months. residential covering residential and commercial rent sir. Uh, uh, uh 6 yes sir so divided into 6 months from the similar similar to this bill sir. Yeah, from the this, time of the lift with this, a grace period of 30 days sir from the time of the lifting of the state of calamity or uh, the ECQ uh what what we included in the MCs the ECQ sir. Okay, so at least nakuha natin yung idea, no? So, they, so six months ang sa inyo, ha? So, there yes, is already, there's already a program na yung length of time is six months. The bill says uh, yes, three months. Sige, so, so thank you, Yusek. So, can we now... Yes, sir. Thank you. Siguro, uh, siguro it's uh, time to recognize now the representatives or the regulators of the affected uh, utilities. So. Electric. So, see to Mama Agnes. Yeah. Any any comments? Okay. Okay. After, after Mama Agnes, maybe the Meralco. Sige, sige, ma'am, go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. Uh, well, we really commend the uh, the author, Senator Talentino, and of course the committee and the Senate for. Uh, having this bill because this is something that uh, we really need especially now that uh, COVID-19 pandemic is something that's very new. Uh, on the part of uh, the Energy Regulatory Commission, your honors, we have actually issued the advisories and uh, for the first, second and third, yeah that's true, the last covers only the uh, ECQ. Uh, we have issued a suspension or deferment of the payment of uh, the utilities for four months. So upon the uh, lifting of the ECQ, the uh, four months, the bills falling due within the uh, ECQ period should be, uh, should be paid for in four months time, equal installment. However, we are issuing another one to cover the MECQ because when we compared the MECQ and the ECQ actually have very little difference and both under both situations 
uh, there are no access to public transportation. So that, uh, to our mind, in the mind of the Commission, the daily wage earners, the informal sector, still are not able to be gainfully employed. Hence, in the advisory that we are issuing, the four months will, re will remain to be applicable to all, as we have issued in our previous advisory. The change now, because of the MEC2, is that we have targeted beneficiaries, those uh, consuming 200 kilowatts, monthly 200 kilowatt hours, uh, because we think these are those who have no aircon and the most that they only have basic uh, electrical uh, uh, equipment or uh, uh, that those are all they have. And so we are extending for this uh, group. Uh, we can call them actually the lifeliners now. Uh, we are extending the payment for six months targeted po ito. Katulad po nung nandito sa bill, residential, ito pong bago sa advisory namin will be the targeted uh, lower uh, lower sector of the electric uh, consumers. And uh, we have also for our uh, for the industrial or commercial, we have uh, we are requesting our regulators or our distribution utility, utility I'm sorry, uh, to relax the guaranteed minimum billing demand, which is the minimum that, in as much as we know, that the, our there are no businesses uh, open during the time that uh, we have the ICT. Now, for certain points, Your Honors, uh, regarding uh, uh, matters, uh, regarding the provisions of the bill, uh, we would like to ask uh, the type of the, the calamity, what type of state of calamity will trigger the implementation of the aut automatic moratorium. Next is, what is, uh, uh, is it uh, regardless of duration? For example, if the, if let's say the, there is uh, the typhoon lasted only for three days, and flooding probably lasted only for four days. So will the uh, installment of three months automatically uh, be uh, given or availed of? And uh, the other is uh, who should be the one to declare the state of calamity? Because the COVID-19 is declared by the national government. And now we know that for LGUs, to make use of their calamity funds, they can also declare, uh, they can have a, a declaration of calamity. So at what, at what level? Uh, and uh, so, and the other, of course, is this is really just for residential, and that's the import of the pool. So in other words, they may be included as part of uh, uh, amendments of this bill or they may be taken up in an IIR once this is uh, once the bill is already it already becomes a law because there are too many details that uh, uh, we may we are asking or we are yes so uh, your honors this is uh, what the ERC has done as a regulator and uh, as an institution these are the suggestions and observations. Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, Chair I, I, want, no, I, I want to recognize the participation online of Senator Bato de la Rosa. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Yeah. Good morning. Okay, so morning. can we hear from, uh, no. yeah, thank, you, thank you, Senator Bato. We will hear from the author. Yes, just a quick uh, reaction, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, First comment uh, relative to Jose Castello, kasama po yung mga man-made or natural calamities. And, and if we can uh, look at existing laws, there is an, an earlier law, 1912, even uh, citing invasion of a, of a foreign uh, nation. So kasama po yun. Uh, pasalamat po ako kay Chairman Di Binadera dahil sila po yung nag unang nagbigay nitong alituntunin tungkol po sa delayed payments lalong-lalo na sa kuryente, 
But we have to consider likewise, uh, Madam Chair, na papunta po tayo doon ngayon sa Barangay Community Quarantine. After this uh, MECQ, ang gagawin po ng IATF, lalong lalo na dito sa Metro Manila, ay hahayaan na lang po yung mga pamahalaan lokal na sila ang mag-lockdown kung anong po, alin pong barangay ang dapat uh, i-quarantine muna. So, we're, in terms of jurisdiction, we're now looking at uh, selective areas kung saan magka-quarantine. So, you, you have to take that into consideration. Uh, concerning your uh, your uh, query relative to sino magdi-declare ng state of calamity, I think we have rules uh, and dreams yes, may mga rules dito. If it's in terms of a, a it covers a national uh, geography, it's the President of the Philippines. Yes, indeed, local officials are allowed. So, until the lifting, you have been a mayor before, uh, Chairman Dilinadera, until yes. the lifting of a state of calamity by an LGU, that is the time when the uh, law will be put in effect. It will now trigger the, the moratorium as well as the installment payment after a month. Uh, Mr. I, 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 I hope I clarified some elements, uh, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po and welcome din po kay Senator Bato de la Rosa. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for all the inputs. Uh, from uh, from how the bill has been drafted, mukhang klaro naman when, when state of calamity yung calamity. So I don't, I, the author, I think, does not want to distinguish whether it's nationally declared, locally declared. Yung, medyo, yung controversial lang idea para sa akin yung Kay Yusek Ruth na to expand it, to include martial law, Ruth. <laughs> to, 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 be, to be considered. Uh, yes, sir. These are the conditions uh, stated in the Price Act the price for a declaration of a price freeze so oh, yeah. that maybe we can align yes. uh, the implementation of this law on, on, cases, uh, on cases indicated in the Price Act, sir. I'm, I'm putting it in the chat group, sir. So maybe the disaster or state of calamity and the emergency. Siguro yun, ano natin. Or a state of war. Number five, number six in the price after is a state of war. State well, of war. we okay. hope we don't get there, but yes, sir. Just Siguro to make sure we're prepared. Yes, sir. Sige. Okay. Mr. Chair. Ah, Mr. Chair. Si Amy. I mean, ba? Okay. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Sir, sir, <laughs> Mr. Chair, nag-aalala lang ako na kapag na lahat ng state of calamity, meron pang state of emergency, local and national, papasok tayo sa tag-ulan. First time tayo nagkaroon ng bagyo sa Mayo. Ang dalas nito, parang kawawa naman yata yung mga utilities, malulugi ng bongga. Hindi ko lang. Uh, I can lang just be, I'm uh, full support and admiration for our colleague Senator uh, Tolentino for uh, filing this. Kaya lang siguro may parameters din kasi may kaya, may bagyo, may lindol, may sunog, may kung ano-ano talaga. Tan kunin natin yung ano nila, inputs ng mga private uh, utilities. Kunin din natin. Thank you, uh, Chair. May hihilit rin ako. Kasi ang binanggit ni uh, Senator Paul, eh, yung mga MS and East na dapat natin tulungan. Pero dito sa bill natin, ang sabi ng mga bahay lang, residential lang po. So uh -huh. hindi ba pwede natin i-expand yan ng mga commercial businesses, yung MSMEs na tinatawag. Tapos magkakit tayo ng definition. In France, there's already a uh, similar law indicating that small and medium scale hard hit businesses that have lost 70% of their revenues should be exempted for the moratorium period. Baka consideration lang po na kahit limited, bigyan rin natin yung MSMEs kasi that's the intent of the bill according to its author earlier. Thank you, ma'am. So we will look at the French uh, legislation. Tignan po natin. Mr. Chair, uh... Tama po si Senator Marcos na dapat po naka-indicate sa bill. The reason, why, uh, the reason why I mentioned that kanina kasi marami po tayong mga backyard, uh, backyard home base, family base, uh, business session, mga pangyaria sa probinsya, yung pong mga, yung pong mga, may mga tahian sa, sa probinsya, eh nasa bahay lang po ito. Pero pag, pag lumabas po yung bill nila ng kuryente, eh yun po eh charged as residential. 
So yun po yung uh, tinutukoy ko kanina. But I'm, I'm willing to uh, uh, accommodate the proposed amendments coming from uh, Senator Marcos. Salamat po, Mr. Chief. Yes, um, napakagandang idea nga nun eh. Bikan, hindi naman siguro violative of the equal protection yun. Ano? If we uh, distinguish the micro, small, and medium enterprises from the rest of the enterprises. Anyway, the law currently distinguishes uh, yeah, yeah. This, this sector. This eh, this sector. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so and the, uh, oh, oh, the insight I got from Chairman Devanadera is that ngayon pa lang, the ERC already adopted this moratorium or amortization concept, ma'am, no? but in your four months pa nga four months and then gagawin nyo pang uh, targeted residential targeted six months for the MECQ so so the idea the idea behind this bill ha has already been implemented and adopted by your agency mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so hindi na to hindi na to strange talaga okay Apa. Yeah, Mr. Chair, hihirit lang ako. Maraming salamat kay, uh, kay uh, Apo Agnes kasi maliban pa sa moratorium, imsigam pa niya yung biglang pagtaas ng Meralgo Bills. Maraming salamat sa support. Pa. Thank you very much. <laughs> so but before we hear from the Meralgo uh, representative, andito, the, andito si, ano, si Attorney Rosan, Rosero Lee of the NEA, the Electrification Administration. Ma'am, if you have if you have some comments, ma'am, we are ready to hear your comments. I'm not a mute. Ka. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, Mr. Chair and the, the honorable uh, senators. Uh, just to manifest, uh, the administrator would have wanted to join the virtual meeting today. However, he's attending also an online uh, board of administrators meeting with me at, uh, at the same hour. Anyway, I would like to manifest that uh, the administrator has already forwarded our comment on the said bill as early as uh, last week, probably that was uh, May 14, on the date originally set for the hearing of this uh, uh, proposed Senate bill. Uh, and uh, I hope that everybody was already given a copy of our uh, letter dated uh, May 13 that uh, states the position of the National Electrification Administration. Well, uh, let, let me just uh, uh, put forward this, that uh, the National Electrification Administration really acknowledges the importance of helping the Filipino people during state of calamities. However, as we have already uh, advanced in the letter position paper that we have sent to the committee, uh, nilagay po namin doon yung mag naging, naging epekto po itong COVID-19, itong present COVID-19 natin, as we have adopted and issued corresponding memo to the electric cooperatives to implement po the ERC advisory on the uh, implementation of the amortization schedule. However, we have likewise uh, indicated in our uh, position paper the effects on the financial position or in the financial uh, cash position of the electric cooperatives, uh, especially so uh, that uh, the nature of the electric cooperatives, which are non-stock, non-profit, and is considered a revenue neutral. So while I wouldn't, uh, I would despair reading the entirety of the position paper, which I have mentioned have been already, has already been uh, forwarded to the Senate committee. Um, uh, I, would like, uh, I would like to uh, read aloud <coughs> the recommendations of the agency. Kasi nga po, doon po sa sinabi namin na talagang tatamaan po ang uh, financial uh, operations in, to in totality, the operations of the electric cooperatives on the side of the ng electric cooperatives which the NEA supervises. Uh, we, I, I, I follow up yun pong pinoint out ni Senator Tolentino as well po ni Senator uh, Aini na yun atin po mga electric cooperatives being uh, non-stock, non-profit, talagang tatamaan po nito, especially so na on the average po, 19 to 20 typhoons ang bumibisita sa ating bansa 
other than the other calamities such as uh, volcanic eruption, uh, yung rebellion, and, and all others. So more or less, uh, on the average, sabihin na natin 20. So pag in, nilagay po natin itong amortization na ito, apektado din po ang pagbabayad nila sa kanilang mga power suppliers and all other suppliers and uh, uh, loan obligations that our electric cooperatives are paying on a monthly basis. So and that is why one of the suggestions po is that if hindi po ma-include dito sa bill na to yung corresponding, in other words po, para po maging congruent if the electric cooperatives, uh, if, if the mem if the electric consumers will be given this uh, reprieve of uh, amortization three gives, we also suggest so as, to, so as to cushion the impact of these amortizations or definitely delay na magkaroon din po ng similar law or if not possible na may pasok din po sa batas na ito, ang corresponding din po na reprieve on the payment to the electric cooperatives uh, uh, power to their IPPs, NPPs, and all other suppliers na dependent din po ang mga electric cooperatives sa revenue nila, which is derived po from the collections from the electricity from their respective electric consumers in their franchise areas. And uh, sa, sa part naman po ng NEA, uh, everybody who knows that NEA is also uh, a lending institution to these uh, electric cooperatives. And being a uh, government-owned and controlled corporation, definitely po, with this institutionalization of the uh, three gives law, maa din po ang uh, pagbabayad ng mga electric cooperatives sa kanilang uh, loan amortizations or loan amortization payments sa NEA. And this definitely would affect as well the uh, uh, internal uh, internally generation, IGF, internally generated funds ng GOCCs, which finances po our uh, operation, operational expense as well as the other MOEs ng uh, ahensya. So, yun po ang aming uh, sina ang amin pong uh, recommendation is while we acknowledge po the noble intention the noble intention of the law in extending a uh, reprieve to our uh, uh, countrymen during times of calamities and other man-made calamities i hope the committee in passing the final version of the law will be able to consider all the points that we have advanced in our position paper thank you po Sir Chair, Senator Bato. Senator Bato. Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, oh, okay lang. Tol, tol. Senator Bato, una. Senator Bato. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, maraming salamat. Kung, kung yan ang concern ng NIA, why not uh, i-propose ko na lang na idagdag natin sa batas na pati yung mga electric operatives dahil hindi yan kasing gambuhala ng Meralco, hirap yan sila, isama na rin natin na dapat may three gives din sila doon sa kanilang power suppliers. Pwede ba yun? Yung mga maliliit lang na ito mga gives, mag three gives din sila doon sa power suppliers kung po pwede. That's my opinion, Mr. Chairman. Pag-aralan natin sa pag-aralan natin yan. Hindi, pwede akong kubuha mo na ng, ano, ng factual input from Attorney Rosan. <clears throat> sa ngayong COVID time po, wala pong no electric co-op affected by deferment of payments by its uh, consumers. If I may, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Go ahead. Actually, sir, uh, in our position paper, uh, we have uh, we have indicated in uh, elaborate terms the effect of the COVID-19, which has resulted in the deferment of uh, uh, in compliance to the ERC advisory on the amortization. In uh, for the actual figures, po siguro, uh, 
we, we, we can request uh, the representative from the Filreca, the Philippine Rural Electric Cooperatives Association. Here, uh, here is Attorney Janine Colingan. Talagang nagka problema po sila kasi uh, while the Department of Energy has likewise uh, issued the corresponding uh, circular on the uh, deferment as well of payment to the power suppliers, uh, li limited lang po yung naging, uh, naging ano nila, naging uh, uh, period. And other than that po, the effect also would be on the on the effect of their uh, provisions on their power, on their, on their respective power supply agreements of the electric cooperatives. <coughs> Kasi meron, meron, meron po yan sila ng mga, mga provisions on minimum off-take energy requirement. So definitely po, during times of calamities, as we, have, as, as we are currently experiencing now, considering that most of our electric cooperatives cater to uh, residential uh, consumers in the rural areas, ang, uh, ang natira po nilang mga, mga consumers would be, would be residential. So, so talagang uh, nahihirapan po ang ating mga electric cooperatives and uh, yung big loads po nila definitely po went down. So, apektado po yung provision po sa sa uh, respective power supply agreements ng ating mga cooperatives sa mga generation companies. Especially po on the provision ng minimum offtake at saka po yung may mga provisions na capacity-based contracts po. Uh, I, 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 I uh, trust that uh, Attorney Janine Polingan will be able to more expand this before the committee. Okay. Uh, let me first call on sa, uh, Senator Sherwin. I think Sherwin, no, you raise your hand. And then after Senator Gatchelian, Phil Reca, and then Meralco. You can na lang. Sige. Uh, Senator Sherwin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, first of all, let me uh, commend Senator Francis for coming up with this uh, bill. Um, Talagang pag ganito hong trahedya at kalamidad, lahat po ay apektado, walang pinipili. Uh, whether you're residential, commercial, industrial, rich or poor, uh, apektado po lahat. And uh, it's really uh, a commendable bill, especially uh, in the light of what's happening right now. Uh, this pandemic that we're uh, experiencing right now is uh, different in the sense that it's national and the breadth and depth is really um, quite uh, tremendous. But um, Mr. Chair, I just want to uh, throw this to the table because the bill might also have some unintended consequences, uh, especially in the power sector, which I uh, which I track down on a regular basis. Sa power sector, ho, um, uh, meron pong uh, tatlong importanteng segments ho yan, no? in distribution, then in distribution, kung ano po nakukolekta nila sa consumer, binabayad na kung nila yan sa transmission. Kung ano nakukolekta po sa transmission, binabayad rin yan sa generation. So yung po yung isang uh, ecosystem ng uh, uh, electric supply sector or power sector in this matter. Sa dulo po niyan ay uh, the gen post, ito yung generation. Pero, Mr. Chair, meron pa po talagang dulo niyan. Ito yung mga banko. Because... Lahat po ng power generators, lahat po yan humihiram po sa banko at pinafinance po yan ng banko. Kaya ho, dito ho sa nangyari sa pandemya ho natin, in this case, no, it's very, very uh, particular because um, even though ERC suspended the payments during the ECQ uh, period and gave uh, the consumers a reprieve by paying four times, Ang kasabay mo dito, ang BSP, nag-issue rin po ng circular na magbibigay rin po ng grace period doon po sa loan ng mga jet post. So, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi po magbayad ang uh, consumers, yung mga jet post, hindi rin magbabayad po doon sa tapo. Kaya po yung ngayon, makikita po natin uh, sa sistema po ng ating uh, power sector, stable po sila sa ngayon. No? Sa ngayon, because meron po reprieve sa dulo yung mga genpos na hindi po nagbabayad na, uh, ng uh, loans nila sa mga banko. The unintended consequences ho dito is um, pag hindi ho natin, pag consumers lang ho ang binigyan natin ng reprieve, we 
we might see some disruptions in the gen costs, and we might also see some disruption in the banking system because the gen costs cannot pay the banks. And uh, these are the things that we need to, I just want to put on the table so that we can think about it. And maybe later on, I can propose some amendments. But the unique process that uh, ERC and BSP, both regulators employ, is to have stability in the system. We let me giving reprieve to the consumers, but the whole system might be unstable. In effect, it might create disruptions in the supply of power. So I'm just putting this to the table, although Tama ho si Senator Tolentino, this is really uh, quite uh, uh, important for our consumers because kung talagang binagyuhu yung consumers, wala ho silang pagbayad. O kung may ganitong pandemya, wala ho silang pagbayad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that input. Senator Tolentino, ang ganda pala nitong bill mo. Akala ko by 12 noon, tapos na tayo eh. This one. <laughs> uh, it's 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 a sequence of dominoes. Uh, yung, yung last domino to fall, we must determine what who is that or what what the sector is that, no? Okay. So so as promised, can we I I'll, I'll approach this by utility na lang. So we have the fill reka here. Uh, Just one quick reaction, Mr. Chair. Ah, yes, okay. go, go ahead, Senator Tolentino, go ahead. Sinabi ko po kanina, naulitin ko, uh, we are not after the non-payment of bills. Not waiver, not default, not uh, abandonment of the bills. What we are after is a slight delay in terms of uh, the consumers, uh, small industries, uh, in the payment of their utility bills, be it electric, uh, the water district bills or even uh, telephone telephone bills. So, makukulekta rin po nila yan. Siguro po, ang mangyayari, hindi nila hawak actually yung cash uh, dun sa 3 gives period uh, for capital expenditures pero sa books nila pagdating pa ho yung, yung receivable so talaga yan, mahawakan nila yung, yung perang yon. Pinagpigyan lang natin yung, yung ating mga consumers dahil hindi na ho talaga kayang magbayad. And I agree with Senator De La Rosa kung meron pong gawin in between, uh, kahit dun sa, sa last mile na sinasabi ni Senator uh, Gatchalian, eh dapat baguhin din po yun, yung sa, sa banking system at dun sa iba pang mga uh, dapat pagbayaran. So again, the intention is not a complete default but just a delay of payment. Uh, yung, yung atin pong mga electric cooperatives, matatanggap din po nila yung bayad in, in full. Kaya lang, medyo na uh, Yun lang po, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Chair, inulit ko lang po ito. Thank you. So, can we now hear from the Philreca uh, representative, Attorney Kulingan? Is she here? Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. And good morning to everyone who is uh, joining this virtual meeting. Uh, we would like to thank the Committee on uh, Trade and Commerce and uh, Entrepreneurship for asking us to participate in the discussion of this very timely legislative measure of uh, Senate Bill Number 1473 by Senator uh, Tolentino. We are one with you, Mr. Chair, together with uh, the other senators in protecting the interests and welfare of the consuming uh, public, specifically the uh, electricity and users as well as the electric cooperatives that they are part of. In fact, uh, the association in behalf of the 121 electric cooperatives it, uh, that it represents he, uh, has requested the government regulatory agencies to pass measures uh, similar to this bill by, the, by Senator Tolentino. Some were positively acted by, upon by the agencies concerned, but the others were denied or steered towards a different direction. We understand that this law aims to protect the consuming public who might be uh, affected by the calamity. Uh, however, we would like also to point some uh, concerns and uh, for further recommendations, Mr. Chair. May uh, we ask permission to share a slide presentation, Paul? Yes, please. Yes, please. So uh, as can be seen in the screen, the content of our presentation is uh, the impact of uh, electric, electric cooperatives as non-profit organizations, the regulatory con uh, intervention, and further recommendation. So number one, Mr. Chair, on the impact of electric cooperatives as non-stock, non-profit organization, 
the uh, electric cooperatives uh, methodology is a cash flow methodology, your honors, in a rate uh, setting mechanism. If there will be an automatic moratorium in the billing and collection of consumers under the state of calamity, which is uh, the main feature of this bill, our obligation to the following will definitely also be affected. First is the generation companies, uh, power suppliers, electricity market, and the transmission provider for the electric cooperative source its power supply. Second is the government agencies where ECs remit the collection amounts such as the universal charges and taxes. Next is the financing institutions where the electric cooperatives has financial obligations. Our, our concern, Mr. Chair, is uh, on the following. Where will the electric cooperatives uh, source their payment to their creditors for the next three months for the moratorium period? Will they be uh, get penalized if they do not? Uh, they are not able to pay their obligations on time. Uh, how will they be able to balance their financial resources between meeting the obligations and rehabilitation and restoration of damages brought about by these calamities? So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the following are the recommendations of the electric cooperatives together with its uh, organization. So we now, uh, how do we settle the aforementioned uh, concerns? We suggest that the moratorium do not only apply to the billing and collection of the electric cooperatives alone from its member consumer owners. There should also be a moratorium in the payment of electric bills of distribution utilities to its generation companies, transmission concessionaires, as well as remittance of collection to the government on universal charges and taxes. And the same schedule as provided for the consumers. Thus, we joined the uh, manifestation of the NEA together with the ERC and uh, Senator Bato. In addition to this, Mr. Chair, the distribution utilities should also be uh, able to avail of the prompt payment discount, even if the payment of the electric co cooperative to its suppliers would be staggered manner, similar to that of the consumers, where the electric cooperatives are not uh, allowed to impose penalties and surcharges. Also, we have concern on regulatory intervention. The ERC issued a series of advisories having similar intention to this measure that is to unburden the uh, consuming public of expenses during the uh, existence of calamity. ERC provided the relief to consumers by extending the due dates. Actually, for uh, their latest advisory, it's a for equal amortization of the bills to the distribution utilities. They also ordered generation companies and other distribution uh, utilities to give the same reprieve by extending the payment due dates of its utilities to them. Now to further uh, protect the consumers during the calamities, there is an issue of uh, contract capacity as mentioned by uh, Deputy Attorney Rosan, minimum offtake and the fixed charges. These are the fees and conditions that the distribution utilities need to pay or adhere to respectively despite the occurrence of calamities or fortuitous events. Uh, further, Mr. Chair, our humble suggestion to address regu regulatory concerns is to insert the provision that during the uncontrollable events that may uh, uh, that may cause sudden and uh, significant decrease in the demand of electricity and a state of calamity is declared, the aforementioned minimum offtake or contracted capacity can be lifted or adjusted accordingly to protect the consumers. The uh, supplier should also relax the provision of uh, their power supply agreement that would otherwise penalize the uh, member consumer owners. Now, in the event that the electric cooperatives would uh, be forced to resort to short-term loan borrowing so as to settle the obligations to suppliers in due time, while waiting for the consumers to complete their payments, it is only equitable that the borrowing cost, uh, including the interest, uh, front and fee charges, documentary taxes, and other related expenses pertaining there must be covered also by the uh, RA11039 or the Electric Cooperative Emergency and Resiliency Fund. Further, we have the following uh, recommendations. The bill assumes that uh, people affected by calamities immediately recover from the devastation within the few months following the calamity. Granting the assumption is true, the measure will uh, clearly unburden them on occasion of the calamity. However, if uh, recovery takes longer, delaying payments will burden them in the long run. 
as it is uh, it has effect on increasing the obligation. We also recommend the Mr. Chair looking into the efficacy of the uh, ERC installment scheme in line with the provisions of the Senate bill. Uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, overall, we uh, support the passage of this law with the prayer that the aforementioned concerns and recommendations of the electric operatives and its uh, organization, Philreca, be addressed by the committee and Honorable uh, Senator uh, Talentino. That would be all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Patanera. Uh, before I recognize Meralco, there's a representative of the Philippine Electric uh, Power Plant owners. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, we represent the small distribution utilities. Okay, if, if you if you have to comment, uh, if you have a turn, sir. Okay, for people. Uh, Attorney, Attorney Ocampo? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, position paper submitted by one of our members, uh, again, Electric Power and Light Company, Chicago, the uh, distribution utility uh, operating mm -hmm. in the end of the So uh, for Section 3, uh, Section 3 of the uh, Senate bill, the comments are, the law should distinguish whether it applies to a national state of calamity or even to localized state of calamity. The authorized official who will declare such state of calamity should be clearly defined in the law and in, in the uh, The moratorium should not apply to residential customers in the upper income bracket. We suggest to put a cap based on energy consumption in the case of electric utility. utilities for those who can avail of the proposed payment scheme. For Section 4 uh, on moratorium, the position is that the law should also extend the moratorium and installment payment to the suppliers of public utilities and service providers. Uh, for example, the generation and transmission companies, power suppliers in the case of electric distribution utilities. In the case of electric distribution utility or DU, being a tightly regulated entity with, limit, with limits on the provision of its working capital, the Energy Regulatory Commission should be granted the authority to formulate a mechanism that will grant relief to the use on the additional working capital needed to bridge finance the accounts under moratorium. On Section 5 on installment payment for the deeper liability, the comment is that the installment schemes to be extended to the utilities respective suppliers should be for a longer period, uh, that is for, for more than three months installment that will be granted to the utilities and to commerce and to commence the after the utilities collection efficiency has normalized. Number two, there should be a limit in the number of moratorium period. Otherwise, if the calamity period is very long as in pandemic situation, the non-payment of consumer bills during such moratorium period would have adverse financial impact to the business of utilities. It is suggested that moratorium period is limited to two months only, but may be extended only in exceptional circumstances by the President of the Philippines. Number three. Uh, we suggest that Section 5 be changed to the total amount due and demandable during the moratorium period shall be payable in three equal monthly installments without interest, which shall accrue a month after the cessation of state of calamity. This is to clarify and to avoid the interpretation that each monthly bill can be paid in three monthly installments. On section six on penalty, we suggest that the fine be expressed in a range of 50 million to 
50,000 to 1 million to consider the, the size of small utilities and depending on the seriousness of the regulation. And last implementation, we suggest that this sentence be added in Section 7. The public utility regulatory agency concerned should consider for rate regulation the financial impact to the regulated utility affected by the moratorium, such as the provision of additional working capital and other mechanisms that will prove, provide rate relief to the utilities. That will be all for the people, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney Ocampo, for uh, already studying and analyzing the bill in detail. So, salamat po. Okay, so shall we hear from Meralco? Mr. Fernandez? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Senator Tolentino and uh, distinguished members of the committee. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to provide some inputs to Senate Bill 1473 for the free gifts law. Um, Meralco supports the objective of the Senate Bill to provide a form of relief for consumers during Kalana. Um, it may be noted that in times of such emergencies as during and after typhoon, electric distribution utilities and cooperatives are among the front lines at work to keep the lights on as far as safe and practical and to restore electric service after an outage as soon as possible. Um, even in the current of emergency distribution utilities are working to ensure the continuous supply of power to essential establishments such as hospitals, quarantine facilities, and others. All these entail, among others, having the needed resources available, including manpower, tools, materials, and supplies, and the support of national and local governments to live up to this commitment. Uh, turning to the proposed legislation, um, we respectfully recommend that the bill also consider how the electric industry is composed of several sectors, as mentioned earlier, uh, generation, transmission, and distribution each of which is critical in providing electric service to consumers. This unbonding of the Philippine power sector is reflected in the electric bill that consumers receive, uh, but to which is added taxes and other government-imposed charges, such as the feed and tariff allowance or fit all and the universal charges. So distribution utilities and electric cooperatives collect all these bill components, which are also called pass-through charges, from consumers and remit these monthly to various companies and agencies, such as the generation companies, the wholesale electricity spot market, the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, the state-owned National Transmission Corporation for the Fit All, the state-owned Power Sector Assets and Liabilities Management Corporation for the Universal Charges, the value added tax to the BAR, and the local franchise tax to the local government units. Hence, a moratorium in payment by customers of distribution utilities, as provided for by Section 4, will need to be matched by a moratorium in payment by distribution utilities to the previously mentioned entities. Further, it is respectfully submitted that the uh, utilities be protected from penalties or fees, termination of generation supply, and or disconnection from the transmission grid arising from non-payment during the moratorium. Uh, similarly, for Section 5 of the bill, pass-through charges that were affected by the moratorium would have to be subject to an analogous interest-free installment arrangement from the various entities expecting payment from distribution utilities. Uh, but nevertheless, similar to what is provided for by the DOE in its April 16 and May 7 advisories during this pandemic, advance payments received by distribution utilities will be proportionally remitted by the utility to the value suppliers and agencies. Uh, this is because resources will still be needed to continue to provide um, electric service. So we respectfully submit that those who can continue to pay their bills need to keep doing so because this is critical to ensuring the ongoing viability of essential service providers. The committee may thus consider that the beneficiary of the of the moratorium be further focused or targeted, such as the qualified household beneficiaries of the 40s program mm -hmm. or other target sectors as may be defined by the industry regulator. 
finally, uh, and this has been also touched upon by the uh, other resource persons, as all costs of distribution utilities are strictly regulated, we respectfully recommend that costs associated with implementing the proposed moratorium in payment and installment settlement of deferred deals be considered by the industry regulator in the setting of tariff of, of distribution. So that is all, uh, Mr. Chairman. We hope that you were able to provide helpful inputs to the committee for your deliberation. Thank you. Hindi ko nakuha sa iyo last point. What was the last point? Can you can you repeat la, the last point, sir? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just on the uh, setting of tariffs, because all of the costs that utilities charge in the tariffs are strictly uh, scrutinized by the by the regulator. Mm -hmm. So we are recommending that the costs associated with implementing a moratorium um, and the implementation of an installment payment of deferred uh, bills be also considered in the uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay. Diba, depending sa inyo yan, in your petition, you you men, you should mention that, diba? Uh, I think to the extent uh, that there are differences between utilities, we may propose different, for example, for uh, allowances for working capital, each utility might uh, propose a different level. But in principle, uh, as a general regulatory framework, the ERC has set um, a general formula for that applies to all utilities. Okay, but right right now, sir, during the COVID, uh, Miralco is now experiencing uh, deferred payments, diba? Right? So how how are you coping with it, and and how uh, and why can you cope with it with the deferred payments? Um, a large part of that, uh, Mr. Chairman, is due to the support of the regulator, um, as mentioned by by the chair. They have also um, uh, directed that payments to the suppliers. Uh, be also uh, deferred. So um, since we are also not able to collect, our payments to our suppliers are also deferred. So, so we should hear from these suppliers who are now uh, absorbing the the burden of the deferred payments. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I think that is the... We have, we have invited these uh, so-called suppliers. And who, who may be these suppliers be? Um, Mr. Chairman, the, the biggest sector would be the generation sector. Uh, so this would be the generation companies and the wholesale spot market. Um, and the other uh, significant sector, sir, would be the transmission sector, which would be the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines. So, yun pala. So, uh, Senator Sherwin, Senator Tol, uh, do you agree that we we have to hear uh, also the positions and the sides of these uh, suppliers who are who are going to absorb the delayed uh, payments? Mr. Chair, uh, it, it appears that uh, this is now a string of uh, entities involved. But uh, ultimately, as we push for the uh, easing of the burden of the consumers, I agree with the, with the good chair that the other uh, sectors should likewise be, be heard. But again, I, I, I repeat my earlier uh, words that this is just a not a total uh, renunciation of the uh, payment of bills, but just a deferment. And uh, the postponement probably would be the, the right uh, nomenclature for this. So, but I, I, I agree with you, Mr. Chairman, that uh, there are several uh, uh, parts of the train coaches involved that should likewise be, be heard to, to clarify all of this because we're, we're just still in the uh, electric, uh, yes, electric. Sector. We, we still have to talk about the, the water uh, part uh, of the portion of this bill as well as the telephone uh, baka pumasok pa ho dyan yung baka ang tanongin ano ba yung pinag-uusapan lang eh, yung post payment ng mga ng tele telepono o yung yung free uh, free yeah. so uh, again I, I agree uh, Mr. Chair pakinggan pa rin natin, natin yung iba but again the intention is really to ease the burden of our ordinary uh, consumers I, 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 I want I want to determine the final domino eh. 
Who, what is that? Who, who, who or what is that? Who is going to absorb all of the the energy, the energy uh, of the fall? Uh, Senator Gatchel and Senator Marcus. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sorry. Um, with uh, apologies, uh, Chairman uh, Chairman Pimentel. Um, yes, I'm uh, also going to uh, add to the confusion. Um, I'm so inspired by uh, Senator Tolentino. Na nakita ko sa ibang jurisdiction, hindi lamang yung uh, water electrical at uh, iba pang utility bills, kundi uh, sinama na rin nila yung um, ating uh, mga cellphone, landlines, uh, cable and internet providers dun sa three uh, month moratorium. So maybe that's a consideration kasi nakapackage kasi yan sa ibang bansa. Uh, isa yon para madagdag ng kaguluhan. Isa pa kasi medyo may pupuntahan po ako um, with apologies. Um, I would also like to add um, Right now, the bed spacers, boarding houses, all those with rentals are facing eviction. And in a time of a pandemic, hindi naman sila makauwi, saan sila tutungo. So perhaps Senator Paul could also take into consideration a rent freeze or an eviction prohibition. Uh, perhaps not in this bill, maybe we can help craft it at least to address COVID immediately. Thirdly, a matter lang, um, Chair, of our uh, statutory construction. So Section 4, moratorium yung title. Just to clarify, to make it explicit po, moratorium on payments and disconnections. Kasi yung iba, nababasa ko akala pwede pa rin may uh, disconnection. Although it's uh, stated in the second sentence, wala lang, para klaro klaro lang. Thank you very much po. And uh, we hope to submit some amendments to pass this bill as quickly as possible. Thank you po. Now, before I recognize Senator Gatsalian, uh, I, I miss actually yung sinabi mo some some lessees are facing eviction bawal yes, right. ba, bawal bawal yun ah sandali is is DTI here because uh, merong ang dami uh, kasi nagrereklamo yung mga yes, yung mga bed spacers boarding houses pati oh. yung mga rentals kasi hindi sila nakakabayad ng ilang buwan talagang pinapatalsik may wala namang mapuntahan di ba uh, Yusek Castelo meron kayong department order ba yun na Deferred ang rental, di ba? To be spread out That's over right. six months, right? Over six months, yes, sir. If rental uh, payments are deferred and you cannot pay, so why are you being evicted? So bawal yan, bawal na bawal yan. Yes, sir. So if they have complaint, they, they may file it anytime. We'll act on it immediately. Bawal po ang eviction, sir. It's in their section 6 of the... Saan ba complain? Saan ba dapat mag-complain? Saan ba dapat mag-complain? Saan ba dapat mag-complain? Saan ba dapat mag-complain? Hindi naman masyadong well-publicized. Tama si Ma'am, si Apo Chair. Hindi naman well-publicized. Hindi nila alam kung saan sila tatakbo. Saan takbo, Madam? Sa DTI po, sir. Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau. Or Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau. May face actions ba yan? Para kasi wala yatang ngipin. Hindi siya tatakbo sa yatang penalties. Um, ma'am, this was issued in compliance with the provisions of the yeah, Bayan yeah, yeah. to Heal as One Act. So, right. this violation of the memorandum circular will be considered a violation of RA 11469. Uh, penalty is up to 10,000 pesos to 1 million pesos with imprisonment, sir, of two months. Yeah. Any, any violator will be penalized, sir. So we, we can tell them to complain sa DTI, ganun ba yun? Opo. Yes, ma'am. Siguro, siguro maganda kung mag-sample kayo kasi parang hindi alam ng tao na hindi pwede sila. Lalo na yung mga estudyante, mm. yung mga bagong graduate, wala na nga trabaho, di na nga nakapag-graduate, wala layasin pa, wala namang mapuntahan. Thanks, uh, Abu Chair. And if we can consider nga yung mga cellphone, cable, internet, kasi wala yatang nabubuhay na walang wifi ngayon at uh, nahihibang na. Salamat. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Senator Sherwin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, just to um, follow up on the uh, discussion on the power sector, learning from what uh, is happening right now, ang DOE po nag-issue ng isang advisory, this is dated April 16, na uh, lahat ng private and public corporations in the power sector magbibigay ng grace period. So outside of those segments na nasabi kanina ni Larry Red, 
utilities, uh, transmission, generation, even the banks. Kung mayroong kang supplier in the power sector, DOE is directed to DOE directed them to give a grace period. So for example, bibili ka ng pyesa, no, o mag, dapat ka magbayad ng pyesa, may grace period rin. So that's the chain that uh, Larry was saying earlier that aside from the usual segments uh, in this in this pandemic uh, the other subsections of the power sectors were directed to give a grace period. Ang, uh, but I'm, I'm also throwing to the table is, of course, if the consumers are not going to pay, it's not only the usual segment, but the smaller segments will also have uh, cash flow uh, issues because they will not be in, in turn paid by those segments. So we just have to think about that. Uh, maybe later on, I'm, I'm thinking of proposing uh, uh, um, an amendment. But uh, the power sector, who kasi dikit dikit eh. Tama kayo, Chair, domino yan eh. So kung yung unang part ay hindi magbabayad, yung magdodomino siya doon sa usual ecosystem at magdodomino pa doon sa mga suppliers na nasa gilid. Uh, in this case, in this case if you notice it's stable because ERC and DOE said lahat na nasa power sector magbigay kayo ng grace period. So walang sumisingil ho ngayon. But in this case, if the ERC and DOE will not say that uh, will not do the same for the other uh, segments we might have cascading issues. Yeah, but since, since since we know that now from the experience with COVID, we can amend the law to anticipate. Correct. And, and right. require, require the participation of the regulators so that they will issue now those advisories or orders which we have found beneficial during the COVID pandemic. Yeah, I, I, I commend the yung objective nila is stability in the system, not only for the consumers, but the entire system. And that's being achieved right now, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. so we can look at the current ano, setup and then capture it in the bill. Ganun na lang siguro. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, sure. Sige. Uh, uh, andito, si, andito yung consumer, laban consumer, but Attorney Dimagiba, can we hear from you after oh, we have heard the three utilities na? Ganun po. So are we done with the the electric the power sector in the meantime can we move on now to the next uh, utility mentioned in the bill which is water okay now so uh, let's start with uh, mr jesse lapos Are you, and dito pa? Dito pa si jesse yes. of the local water utilities administration sir if, yeah, you, have some, if you have some input sir uh, you're welcome to uh, Tell us your inputs. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, the honorable members of the Senate, at uh, Senator uh, Tolentino, sir. Uh, we support the bill, uh, dun sa three gives. Actually, uh, we are practicing this, practicing this already before any calamity, saka disaster. And, uh, pero ito po ay mga 30 days lang, so napakadali. Uh, uh, the water districts po, we have 530 nationwide and servicing 4.7 million household. Uh, yung mga ibang water utilities po, they have requested uh, debt relief, yung pagbabayad nila ng uh, loans sa uh, LUA, which we have granted until uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is lifted. So hindi ko natin alam kung kailan yan. Uh, yung iba po, they already requested the use of their uh, reserve funds, which is three months. Uh, to date, uh, yung 216 wala na hong reserve. So they are just banking on the payment na voluntary from the consumer. With the bill of uh, Senator Tulipina po, which uh, we feel is all is good for the consumers, uh, 4.7 million ang hindi na magbabayad. So kung hindi po magbabayad ang 4.7 million, that is the amount to about 1 billion a month. Uh, kung hindi po magbabayad sila sa water district at wala na silang uh, reserve na three months, then magkakaroon ng problema sa kanilang operating cost. Ang, ang luwa po uh, is also dependent on the payment of interest sa galing sa mga loans. Kung hindi rin sila magbabayad, then uh, kami ang domino, last, last touch kami. So in effect po sana dun sa IRR, uh, a support from uh, the national government is uh, suggested 
uh, because uh, 4.7 million po ang hindi magbabayad nito. At uh, hindi natin alam kung hanggang kailan yung uh, pandemic. And yung, after, the, after the pandemic, 3 months pa bago sila makakapag recover. In the meantime, hindi po natin kailan ang magsosurvive ng water districts. Uh, 60% of our water districts are small water districts where we're in uh, less than 3,000 households. So yan po ang uh, amin. Uh, survival din. At, uh, sana ma may lagay dun sa IRR yung tulong ng national government sa amin. But we, 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 feel, we fully support the bill of Senator Tolentino, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we have from the MWSS, Mr. Lester T. Is he still here with us? Yes. Uh, so you, sir, if you care to comment, uh, this is your time, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we are requested to be able to present this slide of what uh, MWSS regulatory office has already and be implemented. This has actually been released to the media already early this week. So basically we support the, the, the intention of the of Senator Tolentino's bill and we have something similar already but uh, there is a difference. The only difference basically with uh, the Yes. Uh, can you see the? Can you see the slide? Yes. 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 We can see. Okay. This. All right. Thank you. Uh, this actually is a slide for determine the the fields of the risk for grace periods for payment for a little water and many that was the These actually, instead of a blanket, uh, three uh, three months free for all customers, we decided to do a targeted one. And just, we decided that to give three months payment terms to lifeline accounts only. For non-lifeline accounts, we gave them 60 days or two months. Okay. The reason behind this is that uh, we want it to be targeted and we don't want to have uh, any, and we don't want to unduly hamper the operations of uh, Manila Water and Manila because of their cash flow. They also they also have bills to pay. So we believe that those who can pay are normally the non lifeline accounts. So they are just given 60 days. But those who are non -life, those who are lifeline accounts, these are normally those who consume 10 cubic meters or less per month. And those this is majority of these are the low income households. So this day will be given the three months that uh, is provided under the bill. That is obviously. Are you, are you done, Mr. T? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm done. I'm finished. Okay, so thank you for your inputs. Uh, who wants to be recognized, Senator Tolentino? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can, can, can the Secretariat furnish us copies of the presentations made, uh, especially MWSS? And then a while ago, we, had, we, we, we heard of a uh, presentation coming from the Cagayan Electric uh, of cooperative uh, and another uh, presentation made so but, but we can uh, compile all of this and and, and I again we welcome all the good suggestions coming from not just our, our colleagues but but from the resource persons as well yes uh, uh, secretariat please uh, furnish all senators uh, copies of the presentation as well as position papers so ng ngayon pa lang, I'm calling for position papers of all uh, affected agencies and uh, private uh, entities 
And all those who want to comment, even the uh, consumer sector. Do we have the Department of Energy representative? Baka nalimutan ko kasi. Do we have Ms. Quijada here? Ah, Ma'am, I see you. Sige, uh, I, I forgot to recognize you just in case you also want to comment, Ma'am. Please. Balik, balik mo tayo sa energy, ah. Ma Ay, uh, so, so, so. Yes, Ma'am. Wala ko ho, tapos na sa nito. So, Sige, oh, kung, kung meron lang kayong gusto sabihin, yes ma'am. Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, most of those things have been already uh, uh, mentioned. So I will just uh, tell you, uh, Mr. Chair, those things that the, the, the Department of Energy has also done. So what we have done is to balance these things. Uh, I have heard a lot of uh, those both from the consumers and from the suppliers as well. And the DOE has done the uh, advisories to balance these things. So uh, initially, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, this is the, um, the, the position of DOE, but we will submit the final one. This is just the initial one. So the DOE fully supports the intention of the bill for it for it promotes the welfare of the Filipino people, especially the household sector. As early as uh, March 18, 2020, the Energy Secretary Alfonso G. Cusi has already issued a memorandum to all private and public corporations in the power sector calling for uh, solidarity with the country by deferring payments of obligations and dues for 30 days after uh, 14 April 2020 for the benefit of the consumers. Uh, this includes also the enjoyment of the distribution utilities nationwide to give their electricity consumers a 30-day extension for payment of bills due to due for the period uh, 15 March to uh, April. Uh, 14 April. For the areas remained under ECQ after the April 30, uh, 2020, another advisory was issued on May 7, 2020, to extend the payment grace period until May 15, 2020. These advisories are measures to help keep the energy sector as well as our stakeholders afloat in the country's battle for the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> um, the DOE Consumer Welfare and Promotion Office has received several uh, complaints as well about the electricity bill hike of the Miralco and other utilities. Uh, Secretary Cusi sent a letter to Miralco enjoining them to explain this issue, including the 47 peso convenience fee for using their online application system. Um, the Senate Bill na, uh, na 1473 or three gives law by Senator Tolentino will even more help ease the financial burden of the consumer. However, we would like the committee to consider the following as well. Um, the need to qualify the implementation of the proposed uh, scheme based on the degree of calamities that will hit the country. And then the degree of penalty should be commensurate to the degree of fault or negligence committed. For the energy-related uh, issue, the DOE recommends establishing a TWG spearheaded by uh, DOE and DTI to oversee the welfare of the consumers. For other matters, we submit to the wisdom of the committee. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Pakisabi na lang kay Secretary Kusi that we are going to look at he, the department's advisory as some sort of a model on how to make the, the entire ecosystem, using the words of Senator Gachelian, stable. Kasi sabi ni Senator Gachelian, as of the moment, we are stable because you, you, the DOE anticipated the potential problems with your advisories. So please furnish us uh, a copy of all of these advisories. Siguro sa position paper nyo, ma'am, you also mentioned how come you thought of these advisories? Bakit na-anticipate ninyo 
O so para makita namin yung thought processes necessary in uh, anticipating uh, unintended consequences words na naman ni Senator Gatchalian yan in, in a uh, in a calamity situation. Thank you ma'am. Thank you ma'am Kia. Yeah. Now that Mr. Chair we will submit the, those advisories that were uh, uh, um, sent to the stakeholders include uh, which will be included as attachment to our position paper Mr. Chair. Thank you ma'am. So we will now go to the private uh, water distribution uh, private utilities so we have a representative from Maynila Water Services, Mr. Estrellado. Yes, sir. I can see you, sir. If you, yes, you have sir. some inputs, uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, no, sir. We already aligned with our regulatory office yesterday uh, to come up with uh, procedures that were just uh, relayed by Attorney Patrick T. So uh, I believe that that's fully covered. That fully covered our concerns. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, yes, sir. The only other information I wanted to add is for as for my NILAD, the lifeline customers accounts for 330,000 out of our 1.4 million customers. So it's a, a fairly significant uh, portion of, of our customer base. Okay, thank you for that uh, information. Uh, do we have Manila Water with us? The a representative from Miss Kinyes Esmeralda, ma'am. Ma'am, naka mute, please. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, good afternoon and good afternoon, everyone. Um, representing Manila Water, I am uh, Esmeralda Kinyes, uh, the group director of the ESO business operations of the company. And uh, we thank you for the opportunity to be heard and uh, to give our position. Uh, really, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, resulting uh, in the implementation of the enhanced community quarantine for the past two months has disrupted the livelihood of many and created a serious impact in our economy. We understand uh, the wisdom and intent behind the bill, and especially during these tough times. And so uh, Manila Water has thus exerted a uh, lot of efforts and extended acts of relief to alleviate the difficulties um, experienced by our customers. During the entire period of ECQ, Manila Water has extended grace period on bill payments, that's one. And then we also suspended disconnection activities and up to now. And uh, we also provided online channels for bill verification and payments all with the primary goal to provide 24 by 7 water supply availability to all our customers. Also, uh, we have aligned with our chief regulator who presented earlier. Um, in fact, um, this is very much aligned also with uh, the bill uh, being proposed. These efforts go hand in hand with the government's responses towards fighting the pandemic. One of which is this uh, moving um, uh, to pass a law that would help lessen the economic burden of the Filipinos. However, um, sir, um, in the inter um, we would like that the interest of the public uh, will also be balanced with the need to sustain our operations in order to fulfill our service obligations to all our stakeholders. That said, with regard to the proposed measure introduced by the good Senator Francisco Latino, we will be submitting our position paper, our official position paper containing our comments and remarks for the consideration of the joint committee. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Ma'am, ma'am, to, 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 to simplify, no, from yung need, yung sabi, parati ko narinig kasi need to sustain operations. Ang ibibang sabihin yan, yung cash flow yan, if, if, if there, is a, there is a stoppage in the cash inflow, there must be a corresponding relief in the cash outflow. Ganun po ba yun? Ah. Actually, sir, that's, uh, that's uh, related because we also depend a lot uh, from our collection to sustain, sustain our operations. Um, we will uh, submit, uh, sir, in detail our comments um, to the bill and uh, we can submit early next week, sir, our position paper. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So Thank you. we are done with water. 
did I overlook anybody uh, concerning water? Wala na po. So let's proceed to the other utility mentioned in the in the bill, telephone bills. Is uh, Is the NTC still with us? Mr. Mr. Cabarios? Sige. So let's, uh, Committee Sec Secretary, can you just inform uh, Mr. Cabarios if he's ready now? We will entertain him. But in the meantime, so can we hear from PLDT? Is here, Attorney Pangan? Sir, go ahead, Penero. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, honorable members of the committee and uh, fellow resource persons. For PLDT, just a brief statement, Mr. Chair. While uh, the Public Act 7925 or the uh, Public Telecommunications Policy Act of the Philippines particularly gives telecommunications companies the right to freely make their business decisions to ensure fair return and to observe due process, P PLDT would like to extend its support on the proposed three gives law to ease the financial burden of the public, especially its customers, uh, during this public health emergency. In fact, the PLDT group, alongside with SMART, has already implemented a six-month installment payment program for all its retail postpaid accounts with the outstanding balance that fell due as of April 30, 2020, Mr. Chair. Uh, which duration is even longer with uh, the period provided for in the bill. It must be emphasized, however, uh, Your Honor, that in crafting this proposed legislation, we should also take into account balancing the interest of both the public and utility companies as we are all greatly affected by this pandemic. Considering that it is still uncertain until when this state of calamity will last, companies in general will be placed in a difficult situation if the moratorium on payments will be prolonged to coincide with the health emergency. In this regard, uh, uh, PLDT will be filing a joint position paper, Mr. Chair, with uh, SMART for a comprehensive comments on the proposed bill. In fact, Your Honor, we already have a, a draft. We'll be just finalizing it, and we can submit at the earliest uh, opportunity. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair. We would like to reiterate that PLDT is one with the government in search for measures that will ease the burden of the public to get through this pandemic and we appreciate the opportunity given to the given by the committee to appreciate to participate in this important legislative exercise. Thank you, sir. Attorney, Attorney Pangan, if we want to cover also internet bills, we we need to amend the bill because telephone bills, the phrase telephone bills do not necessarily or automatically include the bill for the internet service. Uh in our position, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, when referred to as telephone bills, uh, we're, we're amenable with also internet connection. So, so the reprieve that we've been, the reprieve that we've given our customers, the six-month uh, installment payment program also covers uh, those customers that have internet connection. Uh, okay, so good, good. But siguro just para to just to be very analyzed, siguro very specific, we can really also mention internet. Thank you, but thank you for that input, Attorney Pang. Yes, so, thank you, sir. So we have also a representative from Smart Communications here, Attorney Ibai. Attorney Ibai. Yes, sir. Anak kay, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Okay. Chair. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I uh, joined my colleague from PLDT. But I'm also here, Mr. Chair, as the Vice President of the Philippine Chamber of Telecom Operators, which is the umbrella group of uh, major telecom operators nationwide. And uh, while it, uh, our membership includes uh, the major players like PLDT, Smart and Globe, it is also comprised of the many small provincial and rural telephone companies across the Philippines. So uh, I'd like to enter uh, the position of the PCTO, initial position, is that uh, we laud the intent of the bill and we support uh, its lofty objectives, mainly to assist the consumers and ease their burden amidst the calamity. 
However, as in any proposed law, the challenge overall is to draft a well-balanced piece of legislation that should address from a holistic perspective all contributing sectors of the economy. So um, in the definition of the calamity, first we ask is, will the bill adopt the definition of calamity as stipulated in the NDRRMC memo order number six? And the two categories enumerated therein, which is local and uh, or national. Next, while we support the call to ease the burden of consumers, we seek a balance to rationalize the terms of the moratorium as stated in the bill. For some prolonged calamities, it will be difficult for telcos to only begin collecting a month after the end of the calamity. Telecom companies have always been at the forefront of helping out during disasters. In fact, telcos were even tapped by law to implement RA10639 or the Free Mobile Disaster Alerts Law. And as an example, SMART itself spent more than 500 million to set up that system. During this calamity, uh, telcos have provided emergency platforms of access for government and hotline, no? uh, including, including the 911, the government hotline 888. And during this time, we provided platforms for PGH, RITM, DILG, Department of Health, the Red Cross, Lung Center, and PNP, aside from giving direct assistance to government quarantine facilities in terms of connectivity. So, uh, Mr. Chair, during times of weather disasters, millions are also earmarked for facilities restoration in areas where severe damage is caused by typhoons. Post-disaster, telecom companies also conduct relief operations to assist residents in areas where telecom signal has been lost and bring other forms of assistance in the area. So lastly, Mr. Chair, we appeal to the leadership of this committee to consider that management of calamity should be weighed on the extent, nature, and overall effect on the people and the economy. We pray for a well-founded balance in regulation and to temper the provisions to consider also the welfare and jobs of the workers and employees of the telecom companies. In short, the viabilities of the operations of a telecom company rests upon a reasonable fair return amidst any crisis. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Tony, I have a question. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. In the energy sector, we, we, <clears throat> we, uh, we, our resource persons were basically the distributors. And then they were they informed us that be, be behind the distributors are their so-called suppliers. So if 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 customers defer payments to distributors, they should be allowed to defer their payments to suppliers. In the telecom sector, do you have also these dominoes behind your back or suppliers behind your back that you also need relief uh, from uh, paying? Well, Mr. Chair, uh, probably unlike the energy sector where we have a definite direct chain of uh, suppliers, the, on our part, our suppliers, our, our vendor, our, uh, our uh, telecom equipment suppliers, and of course, uh, the banks, uh, financing companies who, who have uh, extended uh, loans to us. No? Uh, if, if, if you notice, uh, uh, we, we actually... Uh, because of the COVID pandemic, we lowered our our uh, budget for uh, PLDT. We lowered our uh, expenditures from about 80 to uh, by 20 percent to around 16 billion uh, pesos. No, still still a hefty amount. But uh, considering that um, if if this three gives law, uh, will not take into consideration uh, the duration, uh, then this. Our, our uh, fair level of return based on our income from uh, collecting uh, payments from our consumers will definitely be affected on that on that account, Mr. Chair. So it's just on the, on the, on the return, no? Yes, Mr. Chair. On the return. So thank you very much for that input. So we have also with us a representative from GLOBE, Attorney Tobayan is with us. Is he still with us? I know. I'm, I'm here. Uh, yes. Uh, good good um, afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay, uh, sir. Go ahead. To, uh, yes. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and to the author, of course, uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Senator Tolentino, and other senators who are still present, as well as to our resource persons who joined this uh, committee hearing. 
Yeah, as mentioned by uh, Attorney Ibai, uh, we are also members of the Philippine Chamber of Telecom Operators, and we share the same uh, similar concern. And uh, in fact, as also mentioned by Attorney Pangan, well, we recognize the principles behind this law, which is to provide relief to those who are hard hit by this uh, pandemic or uh, calamity. And then we also provided uh, a six months grace period well, installment period uh, yeah. within which our customers may pay their bills, which is actually longer than what is provided under the Bayanihan Act and also by this uh, law. And uh, it all so extends to all others, our, all our other services. Uh, well, most of the concerns were, all the, or were already raised by some of the resource persons. I think uh, uh, the Attorney Ocampo, it's, while it's in a different industry, he very well raised the concerns. So it's applicable uh, as well to uh, tell Mr. Senator. But uh, this on the definition of a calamity, yes, of course. Uh, I think this uh, bill was uh, crafted with the end in view of that there will be another calamity in the future of this magnitude. And uh, of course, Senator Talentino mentioned that they're in the country actually vi is visited, visited 15 to 20 typhoons. Uh, of course, um, we need to provide relief in case uh, people uh, are deprived of livelihood and they need to pay for their bills. So I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we need really to circumscribe uh, whether the extent or scope of the calamity. One, would it be national scope? And then uh, extend to a, a billing period of more than one month? Because usually, Your Honor, if you have a more, uh, well, the bill for six of a two things like actually a moratorium. So if the moratorium is longer, the installment, which is only the uh, month, we are afraid that uh, it could be quite difficult to uh, 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 on the part of uh, telcos uh, because we know that uh, as the as Customers have difficulty, or you know, as the as the as the accounts age, it's more difficult to collect. Uh, so actually, one point there, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that we we need a different time period, maybe not exceeding also the number of uh, installments provided under the bill. And uh, uh, I think that's the principal. Uh, uh, co concern, uh, Mr. Chairman, but we will also submit our position paper, which will provide in detail our uh, our position on the matter. But uh, having said, uh, assure the commission and uh, the committee that we are supportive of the principles, the general principles uh, provided under the proposed bill. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Banyero. Uh, and thank you for also pointing out that during this COVID pandemic, the utilities and service providers have been very gracious and generous and even providing for longer periods than that one mentioned in the bill. So, and because of that, because of that, it's a reality and you, you, you're you just telling us the current uh, state, no? state of uh, reality. In the bill, it says that nothing in this law shall prevent voluntary payment by customers. So, lagyan like, natin ng nothing in this law shall prevent utilities and other service providers for, for providing from providing a longer grace period or moratorium period. Because ginagawa na rin naman niyo, but the bill will the bill will provide for a uh, minimum grace period of three months. Ganon na lang. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. I think. Uh, I, I think uh, Senator Tolentino would not mind uh, such an amendment, uh, such an approach, uh, Senator Tol. Correct, correct. Uh, I'm listening intently. Uh, I, I think more of our resource persons are one with us in spirit in uh, achieving the purposes of the. 
Because, so NTC na lang if NTC wants to comment and if not then we can hear now from did I did I overlook anybody pag pag wala we can now go to the laban consumer from the point of view of the consumers is attorney Di Magiba still online yeah good afternoon ah yes sir ah sige sir uh, for laban consumer can you tell us your position okay po ah uh, una una dun sa uh, mga private sector na nakapagsalita and also in relation dun sa tanong mo ano ba ang problema ng uh, position nila na to balance the interest of the business and the consumer and so totoo po itong bill ni Senator Tolentino will actually help them the private sector improve on their cash flow uh, yung pong extension of payment na ina-allow ng bill ni Senator Tolentino will give them the cash flow that they need for the rest of the year. Dalawa po kasi yan, Mr. Chairman. Eh. May nabasa po ako ng isang webinar sa Europe recently because of COVID-19. Ang sabi po doon, lalo na sa mga utility companies, eh kalimutan na daw na nila yung kanilang sinet na profit and loss statement for 2020 dahil hindi po talaga nila yon ma-achieve ano ba? ang importante po sa kanila is how to generate cash flow meaning yung ibabayad ng mga consumer kaya ito pong bill ni Senator Tolentino yung three gives law eh actually supporting that particular initiative na kahit pa paano yung pong hirap magbayad no, the vulnerable sector would find a way to pay their utility bills no uh, doon po sa aming position paper na na ano mo ako senator eh, na preempt mo yung po yung item 1 na position paper namin na yung yung bill yung 3 months dapat minimum yun eh Yun, yun yung minimum. Bahala ngayon po yung implementing regulators kung ano yung nararapat given uh, the situation. Kasi po yung ating mga pandemic yun, unpredictable na yung duration. Katulad po nitong COVID-19. Doon po sa definition ng terms sa Natur Trentino, akala ko po kasi i-take up din ngayon yung Senate Bill number uh, 1454, eh, yung amendment ng Price Act. Kasi po, yung po mga definition ng pandemic, calamity doon sa bill na yon, angkop na angkop po yon doon sa so gusto niyong mangyari dito sa Senate Bill 1473. No? So, yun lang po, we support the three gives law to the private sector. Uh, what you can collect for the year, eh bonus na po yon. Kasi sa totoo, Hindi pa po tayo doon umaabot doon sa period na even with the expansion, the vulnerable sector particularly, no, yung binanggit kanina ni Chairman De Benadera, yung 200 kilowatt hour and below na in extend to 6 months, hindi pa natin malalaman kung anong performance ng collection doon. So, having said that, generally we support the three gives bill and kung may necessity na magkaroon pa po ng technical working group, to introduce amendments, eh kami po sa laban consumer is ready to participate. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, sir. Asyantra Gachelian, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And then dito pa ba ang uh, Nia? Is Nia still here? Nia is still here. Yes, yes, Senator Gachelian. I'm still uh, here. Attorney Rosan. Yes, sir. Uh, well, may tanong ako. No? For example, alam naman natin, parating binabagyo, let's say Region 5. And the, uh, that's the reason why we enacted yung uh, ESERF, yung calamity fund yes. for electric co-ops. Pag uh, ganitong may calamity, um, in consumers pa, pinapabayan pa? Ano ang policy doon? Well, uh, sir, insofar as uh, Naya is concerned, we, we don't have a standing policy on that. Ang policy po namin dito that we have is uh, we have a policy on the uh, deferment 
or a moratorium on the payment of electric cooperatives insofar as the Renea loans are concerned during calamities. May standing policy to tie again, sir. But insofar as the consumers are concerned, sir, we do not have. I guess that is uh, in, the pro in the jurisdiction of, of the ERC. Yeah, but uh, do you have any, um, uh, for example, the co-op, so lumalabas, their own discretion na yan, if they will give their consumers reprieve or not. Yes, yes, sir, as it is. Because so, Nanea, uh, uh, we do not have any standing policy on that. Do you know if ERC meron? Kasi sa alam ko rin, wala eh. I, I really do not um, have knowledge, except, sir, in, so ngayon pong nag-COVID-19. Except ito. Yes, except ito. Yes, sir. No. Other yeah. than that, sir, I do not know of any occasion of by the happening of any calamity or a natural disaster that ERC has uh, issued or uh, or uh, executed any policy or uh, uh, advisory to that effect. I would take it because the board, the composition of the board of, of any cooperative uh, is representative of their consumers, I would think yes. that they are very sensitive to their consumers. You know, because the board members are normally from the consumers. Eh? Yes, yes. And so I would yeah. assume that they would be sensitive to the plight of the consumers. Kung may bagyo, I would assume the board will uh, declare yes. some form of reprieve uh, or assistance. But there is no rule na pag bumagyo, kaagad merong Reprieve, wala kayong ganun na policy. Okay, so it's really up to the consumer, uh, up to the cooperatives. Okay, All right. thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Senator, Senator Wynn, what's your question about uh, a reprieve, uh, a total exemption from pay, paying or just uh, a delay in, the, in payment? Uh, any, uh, Mr. Chair, it can be a delay in payment, uh, typically, yeah, delay in payment, eh, but uh, okay, any reprieve that uh, the co-op can extend to their consumers. I was, because I was looking through my notes, walang, walang ganun na kong nakita rin. But hindi, there's no law prohibiting it, di ba? Okay, wala, wala. Oh, wala, wala. So yes, this will standardize it. This ah, will in fact standardize. Yes, yes. At Attorney Rosan, please. <laughs> Attorney Rosan, were you raising your hand? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, just for the info po of the body, uh, of course, this is an initiated uh, CSR of Filreca during this COVID-19. Yun po ang uh, pantawid program liwanag. But that just covered uh, one month. Of, uh, at meron po sila ng threshold on the, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, lifeliners, consumption of lifeliners. But Ito nga lang po, uh, ngayon lang po ito, yung COVID-19. Other than, of course, uh, complying to the advisory of ERC and uh, the Department of Energy on the uh, implementation of a uh, staggered basis of uh, payment of bills. Okay, so, basta klaro, the current state of, of the loss allow this or do not prohibit this. So it can be done. So ito lang, itong bilang natin, if this becomes law, meron tayong mga standards na. May mga minimum period, ano yung covered na utilities, etc. Anybody else who wants to comment? NTC na lang siguro. NTC? Ah, sige, so I think NTC is... As, I think NTC has bad uh, internet connection as of the moment. So, internet <laughs> connection. So let us, siguro, uh, final words from the author, uh, Senator Tolentino, please. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair, for accommodating the uh, the hearing of this. Thank you for for our colleagues for participating as well as the other uh, resource persons here uh, present online. Uh, really, it is not a bill that seeks to legislate compassion. It is not a bill that uh, would, would put forward the rights of one sec sector against the other. There is really a need to balance the needs of the consumers vis-a-vis -vis, uh, corporate groups as well as the, uh, the 
the, the parameters wherein the regulator, regulator should uh, move. Uh, this is a social piece of legislation needed by our consumers, by our people, not just within this uh, pandemic period, but even beyond. So I foresee, Mr. Chair, that uh, as, we, as we move forward, uh, we will be able to craft a more meaningful, responsive uh, piece of legislation that would address the concerns, not just of the uh, consumers, the, the public in general, but even the corporate groups as well as our uh, regulators. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, and salamat din po sa kay Senator Gacharyan, Senator Marcos, Senator De La Rosa, and all our uh, resource persons. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, chairman Agnes is online. Senator Wind, do you have a question for the Chairman? Wala naman, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. I, uh, uh, I think later on we'll see her at the Committee on the Whole. Uh, yes, yes. Also, yeah, that's why we need to also either suspend or, or adjourn our, our hearing. So, uh, Senator Tolentino, uh, is it okay with you if we have another hearing with the with the dominoes behind the 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 energy utilities? Yes, Mr. Chair, no, no problem. Even NTC should be there. So we, we, we still we still uh, uh, per perhaps need to uh, uh, untangle. It's not really a domino because uh, no offense, a domino would mean one sector would uh, fall down last, and all 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 pieces of the domino would fall. So it's it's I, I, I foresee this as all all the chips are still standing. But not shaky, uh, no, no sector would, would feel the final grunt or the, the biggest blow. But it is, again, a, a show of uh, compassion and flexibility insofar as uh, uh, how we collectively confront a crisis or calamity as a nation, uh, whether you belong to one sector whether you you belong to a corporate group or the consumers, we are all Filipinos here. Uh, siguro po, uh, your call, Mr. Chair, if we, you call uh, convene another uh, hearing, uh, no problem with us, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So maybe we need we need another hearing so to to ensure the I'll just use the words the lang of Senator Gatsalian to ensure the stability of the entire uh, system. Okay. Of the especially the, the three sectors that are covered by the bill. So in the meantime, so, so wala naman si ang NTC wala na. So in the meantime, uh, the chair would like to thank the senators who, who uh, participated and of course the resource persons who shared with us their valuable time. I made you over lunch for Monday. And that, that, that that may be the reason that why so many are have turned off their video feed, no? Uh, because it's over lunch. So, so thank you very much for, for your time. So we suspend the hearing of this uh, bill. So we, we now suspend our hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you.